Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Ra'uzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. The heart has to come alive, and when the heart is alive, it's like a, a receiver and it begins to pick up the vibration and the signal and that becomes an energy source, a himma. When the heart is alive means it's picking up the energy, it has a tremendous zeal, a want to, to do, a want to love for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad and a zeal to accomplish as much as possible. Wuquf al-qalb, wuquf al-qalb, to be vigilant over the heart means that when we're saying tafakkur, we're saying meditation, we're saying all these terms to see which one catches people's attention. We don't talk in Arabic terminology because our audience are mainly English speaking people. We're not a specialist for Arabs, they have to go to Arabic speaking people. So within the English terminology you have to contemplate upon the heart. It is the throne and the house of the Divinely Presence. The most important piece of flesh that Allah has given to us. When I'm vigilant over the heart, I'm continuously monitoring that my heart to be vibrant, my heart to be clean, my heart to feel the energy. If I'm not feeling it then I have to be concerned, something's wrong in the heart. Am I doing enough of my salawats? Because the salawats are an energy. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli Sayyidina Muhammad. You're doing these, doing these and it's an energy force like a fan for an airplane. You know when you want to hit the fan of an old plane you would hit it, hit it until it would trigger and it would start to go by itself. The zikr has that same reality. If you're not feeling it, you're not doing your salawats, you're not doing the zikr that you're supposed to be doing it and your heart is like dying. And as a result of that you're distracted and interested in more of other things, browsing the internet, chatting with people you're not supposed to be chatting with and doing all sorts of forbidden or on the border of being forbidden. So means that we can easily come and test ourselves every day. When I come to the zikr am I feeling the energy, am I feeling the zeal and the excitement? If not I should be doing my spiritual practices, my energy practices. If you are making your salah as soon as you give your tahiyat and salams sit and just play some salawats, connect your heart. Visualize yourself at Raza Sharif. If you haven't seen Raza Sharif, take a picture from internet. The Masjid al Nabawi, the, the holy mausoleum of Sayyidina Muhammad you print it in a beautiful color photo, put it in a frame, look at it in front of you, and as soon as you finish your salah, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sit and make your salawats and say, Ya Rabbi, make my heart to come alive. And make your salawats 100, 200, 500, 1000, 2000, 5000, 10,000, 20,000 salawats. And the more you do that salawat the more you are moving closer to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That presence brings a love, that presence brings an energy until you feel your heart is coming alive with the zikr and the salawat. It is the most important thing that we can do. Seeing I don't have time because I have to work and make money. Actually if you don't do the salawats your money will begin to move away from you. Your rizq goes farther away from you and as a result you're working even harder now. And your salawats and zikr and ibadah become less and less and less. So the reality was increase the ibadah, increase the tafakkur. At the end of the salah, uh, the salah don't leave, 
At night when you're not busy at work and you make your salah, sit a little bit and meditate that you're at the holy maqam and that you want to make your salawats and feel that presence and don't let my heart to die and cry to them. That let my heart to be filled with your nazar, filled with your love, filled with your energy. And as they begin to do their practices and begin to feel that energy, then they understood the secret is the more they did their practices, the more the dunya came closer to them. Because Allah doesn't need you to run for your rizq, you're choosing to run for your rizq and then you put Allah aside. And as a result Allah makes your rizq actually move farther from you and you start to run even more. And then you're too busy to even come for Jummah, then you're too busy to do your zikr, you're too busy to do all your practices and you find your rizq is very difficult to achieve. And that's not what Allah had intended for this creation especially for Ahlul Dhikr. If you're somebody who's been given permission to tune in to the people of zikr means you're then from them, why Allah has included you to watch. So then learn their system, they do lots of zikr, they do lots of tafakkur and contemplation. They read the du'as from the app, they read all of the salawats from the app. The app is a vehicle in which to put into your hands, most of it works offline, you don't even need an internet connection. And then you should begin to be vigilant of your heart that, I feel it, I feel it in my heart. At certain times I can feel myself crying, can you feel yourself crying? Can you… if you can't shed a tear something's wrong. No I just don't feel any tears, you're not… you have no empathy in yourself, you're, you're close to death uh, that way too. If you can't feel yourself crying, make yourself cry. Put onion in front of you <laughs> and, and cry. Or when you meditate, look at the azab all around you. Look at these children in Yemen and in war where they don't have food. And then think of yourself that a day may come you can't feed your children, you can't feed your family, you can't find anything for them from rizq to give them anything and what will I do Ya Rabbi? Put yourself in every sad situation if you can't cry, make yourself cry. Put yourself in that sad situation and say, what would I do Ya Rabbi if a day comes and I can't feed my family, feed my children, what would I do, who, who, who do I turn to? Please don't let that day come Ya Rabbi, let me to see that sadness now and shed a tear now for that situation. Shed a tear for all those whom don't eat and they don't go to bed with a full stomach and they go to bed hungry. You can't find something to cry for? Don't let your heart to become dead. An alive and a living heart feels and senses everything. Even the killing of an animal that you don't like, even a, a dirty animal they catch a dirty mouse, they catch something, even the zikr of that creature that you don't like you feel a softness and a sadness for it because your heart is alive. And this is the heart of wilayat and sainthood. When someone says, how do you reach sainthood? It's not something to reach, it's not a maqam in which you're trying to achieve because you would be then like you're ascending for a title in a company. This is not a corporation and anything you learn from the business world you better dislearn it in the spiritual world. Spiritual world this is a dissension. How much you can efface yourself, humiliate yourself, allow yourself to be humiliated Allow yourself to be nothing, bring yourself down, bring yourself down. As much as you bring yourself down Allah takes you up. Not trying to achieve a, st a status of sainthood, it's trying to achieve a status of a living heart. Then my heart to be alive Ya Rabbi. Then He says, be a servant to my creation, serve them, help people. 
and help and don't expect anything in return. Some people help and say, oh I'm so upset nobody else is helping with us. What do you care if anyone else helps with you? You wanted to help to be of service to Allah It's not a collective party. So they lived a life on thinking, how to serve, how can I serve? By service it's humiliating, it's not something easy, it's not something paid. It's a service, it's a khidmat. That khidmat brings rahmat. We are in the month and the days of qurban where the lamb taught us the best of character. It had a family, it had an existence, it has love and care. Have anyone watches videos of creatures? They love each other, they love their children, they love the existence that they have. They don't think that it was something else or something better was coming. They eat with their head down to the ground to show their thankfulness to Allah And for our blessing and for our prayers they gave all of that away for the satisfaction of Allah Almighty. And it looked to us while its blood is pouring and, and communicating into our hearts that, can't you do better than me O Bani Adam? That you're so beloved by Allah you can't serve without using your mouth to attack people. You can't serve without being loyal and being of good service. You can't serve without the worry of ascending but think of descending into difficulty. Means how much you can endure of difficulty and struggle in the way of Allah not of ease how we're going to find something easy but how they're going to throw many obstacles in our presence. And Prophet wants to see how loyal you are and how much you struggle. Doesn't anybody watch Erdogan? What do you see from Erdogan? That they immediately, immediately they got what they wanted, they entered Istanbul. Generations they fought for one day to get a land. And what did the show show you? Their biggest problem was within, not outside, but the constant fitna and deceit from within themselves. And Allah wants it that way because that's the struggle. Struggle, struggle in Allah's way. Allah wants to see a group of people who will struggle in His way. Not look at something difficult and think, I better you know plan ahead, take care of myself and make some connections so I have a, a, a way out, a door. No, there's no door. If you think the ship is going down, you're sinking with it. If you think you're going to die, you're going to die with it. And you hold your hand to it and you struggle for it. Otherwise what would be your struggle in life? Everyone's looking for a solution. Some understand the code of what I'm saying, to struggle for something. But everybody has that in their family. Everyone is emailing us, I don't like my husband, I don't like my wife, I don't like my kids. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Give me a du'a to resolve it. There is no du'a. All there is in life is to continuously struggle and struggle and struggle. Because for Allah belongs the victory. We don't understand what victory is in Allah's eyes. You know we're, we're thinking it's some sort of a station, a prize, a, a reality and everybody comes to greet us and say, MashaAllah you reach sainthood, you're such a holy person. The saint is the one whom is the most abused and that nobody thinks he's holy. They said, if at least a thousand ulama are not cursing you, you didn't really reach sainthood. Because your words are, are not understood by external scholars because they're wondering why you don't talk about wudu, why you talk about voodoo. <laughs> that's, that's how they pronounce wudu, wuzu. <laughs> yeah. 
See, what are you talking about all this hocus pocus? Hocus pocus, energy, angels and, and malaika is hocus pocus for people? Because now everything's just external. If you're not speaking external, we don't know what you're talking about. It means no more faith, no more realities. But our life is the struggle. Good tidings for those whom Allah loves and make them to be a group that they have to struggle. At every direction deceit, you turn to the left somebody is backbiting, you turn to the right somebody trying to blackmail you, you turn in, in front of you somebody spreading rumors about you. You don't look for a solution out but you should be realizing you're on a ticket in. Because Allah's now you're in Allah's testing machine, you're not trying to get out of His testing machine, there's no more growth, you're out of His school. You know when you're out of testing machine, you shave your beard, you drop your tasbih and you go try to buy a fancy car and, and walk around naked in a club, there's no more bothering you anymore because now you're shaitan's murid, he's not testing you anymore. You'll have everything come to you and you think, oh my god this is so great, that's what you wanted? Or you put your beard, you put your hat and every single obstacle is coming to you from believers. We don't even have problems with unbelievers and struggling and striving, like, how am I going to pay this, how am I going to do this, how am I, how am I going to accomplish this? Because you're carrying a flag for Sayyidina Muhammad and shaitan is biting your hand, put it down you. Shave your beard, take your clothes, get out. Every day, every day the shaykh has had 500 directions trying to keep everything together and in every place they're biting hands and literally they go home with pain from so much biting and attacking. Mental, physical, every type of difficulty leave your post, abandon your position and it will all end is what shaitan is telling them, leave it, it'll all end your fight. And they can't because they gave their heart to Sayyidina Muhammad they keep telling Prophet better you take me that I'm ready, I'll sleep tonight and let me go like butter, like a hair and ghee, just I'm out. But there's no putting the flag down, there's no way to shave yourself and go out. Is there's only one way out of this operation and that's through death, to death do us part. <laughs> and that's not to your wife but that's to Prophet and to death. And that's not even a departure but that's an immense opening into a reality. We want to struggle, we want to be loyal, we want to be firm upon our path until the day that Prophet wants to open the door and say, come back to me now. I miss you and I want you back in my presence and your da'wah is finished and you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now for the murids and then for people who are at home and Allah gives them that your ummah like the shaykh is describing for you is your home, your murids are your home. Struggle with them, struggle with everything around you, struggle to make your payments, struggle for everything that Allah and in the middle of all that struggling you don't lose your faith, you increase your zikr, you do all your practices and to Allah belongs the victory. And they struggle hard, they struggle, they struggle and Allah asked them, so who's better? The one whom is walking upright on a broken path? You don't know the condition of the shaykhs, what they go through all day long, you just see them smiling. They don't walk around, well oh, man everything's so bad, everything's so bad, you don't want to be a shaykh like that. Because Allah told them, walk upright, keep your head up and happy even if your path is broken all in front of you. That's why there's no complaining. Everything is about a struggle, every struggle is Allah loves me. He wants to bring out my fragrances. Say, you're like a rose, if I squeeze you the whole earth will be drunk from your fragrance. And every time I put hardship upon you and every time you cry that fragrance is released upon earth. 
our life is to be the rose, to the hand that continuously squeezes us, bring out a beatific fragrance, be loyal, be committed and everything about your character Prophet is, is checking off, checking off, checking off that this is a rijal that nothing distracts him from the path of Allah Not his shaykh, not anyone will take him off the course of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad You'll be tested with everything, everything. When Allah tests you with your life, with your family, with your children, with every relationship will be tested, everything around you will be tested to see if it is Allah that you love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is your destination. We pray that Allah give us the understanding of this qurban, to live a life and to be the qurban. That, Ya Rabbi let me to sacrifice myself, let me to put myself on the table. For every time Allah cuts because Allah's knife is unfortunately not too sharp. You know if it was one death blow it would be easy, we would be dead before we dead. And oh wow I reached sainthood but Allah's knife is a little bit dull and every time somebody backbites you it's a stab, every time somebody hurts you it's a stab, every time life deals an unfortunate event it's another stab and we find ourselves we're the actual qurban. Because what Sayyidina Ibrahim didn't accomplish the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad came. From Sayyidina Ismail was the coming of the light of the most praised, the most honoured Prophet of all creation. The nation of Sayyidina Muhammad rises from that qurban. And what no nation and no companionship of any Prophet had achieved in the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that 124,000 Sahabi that would have dropped their life in a, in a blink, in an instant they would have accepted to be under the knife of that qurban and the family under the knife of that qurban. And as we're leaving Zul Hajj and entering into Muharram they didn't say it by just their tongue and say, oh we are the Ahlul Bayt and we are Sayyids and this my grandfather, this my grandmother. They put their lives in the field and they said that I'm going to be slaughtered to show you my example. What they wanted of a sheep, we are that sheep and Imam Hussain as went and gave his life, the life of all his children and grandchildren, witnessed their death before his death. In chivalry that you say, oh, oh let me die so I don't have to see them die because that's going to be very hard. How, how the character is that not only we're not going to give a lamb and say that, Ya Rabbi take this problem with the qurban, I'm going to let my entire family fight before me and let them all pass away. And after they've passed away I'll be the last one like the captain of the ship to go down. Un unimaginable, unbelievable, they are the role models of Ahlul Bayt. Not that you claim your title, claim all these things but actually it's a responsibility. If you meet the real Ahlul Bayt they're under continuous difficulty, continuous attack, continuous attack. People spreading rumours and stabbing them every day. That from every direction is a deceit and every location is a Karbala for them and every day is an Ashura for them. They wake up to see who's deceived them now. And then you know that that one is an inheritor of Imam Hussain salam. Not the people of ease but the people who continuously struggle because they're in inheriting from that maqam. From that soul and from that personality, I dress you from my dress, I dress you from my character, I dress you from my flavour so that your heart is a flowing ocean of their reality. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the reality of qurban 
and give us a life in which to see the holy month of Muharram. And that Allah start that pilgrimage to the Divine with the reality of Muharram and all of the lights and blessings of Ashura. That Allah dress us and bless us with those lights inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, Basir Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.